what's up guys this is Fo Eden of Foe TK or East. Um we're gonna go into a modeling tutorial today well, well I say tutorial it's more just like a sort of a let's model but I'll sort of try and keep it as tutorial-ish so um, won't go too fast so you um, so you can keep up and whatnot. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this now obviously there's probably some people watching this video who are beginners in modeling so I'm not gonna go into th anything too complex so something nice and little like this um, be nice and easy. Now, I'm gonna all create my models for uh, as if they were game assets. So that will be low poly and then with normal maps, um, because anyone can create high poly. That's no problem. But learning how to do low poly and then normal maps is something a little bit different. So if you learn that, you can you can easily do high poly. So we're just gonna analyze this um, SD card for a second. So we're gonna see that we're gonna have to do a very sort of not complex, but it's not basic shape, is it? Um, for the exterior um, of this SD card, so you've got the little indents here, the, you know. Um, so that's going to have to be mesh. Um, now, realistically, if you're making this in a game, usually it would just be a very basic shape, and then these would probably be normal maps, depending on how much you're going to see of it. So, obviously, an SD card's really little, so it'll be really small texture size. It'll be barely next to nothing in detail however we're gonna up that one a bit we're gonna make it as if it was sort of like a, a medium-ish prop as if someone I don't know say you was in, uh, in a game and um, it was a cinematic and then a character first person uh, animation um, character picks up this SD cards and looks at it closely it's got to have enough detail for you to see yeah but we're also gonna use normal maps as well so we're gonna do it in a relatively higher detail but keep it as low poly as possible um, so yeah as I can see here this outline is going to have to be mesh and then these little in indents here you know the, the stickers and this bit here can all be done by normal map and again uh, the rear of it these gold plated or whatever they are um, they could, that could probably be a normal map as well um, we won't go into much about doing um, a mesh detail on that and I will have to see. I might have to do that in mesh as well. So you've got the sort of the basics, but then this sort of top plate on top as well. And then the normal map will go on that. So let's let's get started. So we've analysed the image. What I usually do, it's always best to work off reference. And um, what I will do is I will because I've got two screens, I'll click this and drag that to the other side so I can see it. If not, you can just sort of make the most out of one screen, but the way I do is I go to I click space or this tool here and you get your four views and hover over one of them which will be the top view for this example and hit space so now I'm in the top view um, I come up to view image plane import image and then come to the desktop and I'll find my image here and I'll click open and what it does is that imports an image so if I click space now and come back to the perspective view I've just got this 2D plane that has the picture of my SD card on it and what I usually do is I click on that and I just bring it down a bit because I'm going to be working in the top view to model this so it doesn't matter how up and down you bring it it stays the same in the top view so that's pretty cool bring it down just so it's out of the way from the grid um, come back into the, the top view and now I can make the basic outline on it and the way that I usually do that is um, I create a plane yeah, if I zoom in there or click F that fits it to the frame uh, you can see you've got all these subdivisions I don't like that I just want a simple square so we can come up to our channel box and inputs polyplane it says subdivisions width and height click both of these and then just hit one so it's just one solid plane. Yeah, open our modeling toolkit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the vertexes, hit the W key for movement. So if you don't know that, W is to move, E is to rotate and then R is to scale. Yeah, so click W and we're going to just move that along here, making sure you're in the top view because then what you can do is you can start matching up top to bottom and then left to right and then we can focus about adding detail um, uh, da, 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 da. I will 
bring this slightly to the right and I'll finish it on the end here. So it will start off as a cube but then we'll sort of mould it into what we want. There we go. And now we'll just come and fix the bottom as well. Bring that down. There we go. So now we've got our basic plane. And if it helps, you can turn the grid off, which is this tool here. So you can just see uh, your plane. And then I use this tool here, which is the X-ray. So if you click that, and maybe a wireframe as well, which is this one, you can actually see your plane as well as your picture, which is quite handy because now I can see that I need to sort something about this. So easy way to do it now, I'll grab my multi-cut tool. I've got a lot of shortcuts up here, but if you go to edit mesh and then, no it's not edit mesh, it's mesh tool, sorry, multi-cut. And if you hold control shift and then click on a tool, it'll bring it onto your, is it a shelf? I, I can't remember what this bit's called, but it keeps them all here so they're easy to access. Yeah, so let's go onto our multi-cut tool and I'll just click one there and then click one down here we won't worry about the rounded edges just yet we'll just get a rough shape and then enter it and then that finalizes now we can grab our vertexes and we can just maybe make slight adjustments there we go I'm happy with that and then I can delete this face so now we've got that corner sorted and it's basically the same with the others uh, for this I would Oops, sorry, hit the mic. Uh, grab the multi cut and I'll just indent. I'll just click and it creates a vertex and I'll hit enter. And that's created a vertex there. And then I'll hit G. G is the command to repeat the last tool. And I'll do the same for this one. There we go. So now if I come onto my edge tool, you can see that that's there like that. And then what I do is I extrude it which creates another set of vertexes and I can bring that in and then I can just click and drag let's go into per per uh, perspective view first sorry maybe that wasn't the best best way of doing it actually okay no problem I'll do the same thing I'm just gonna show you all my little tricks and whatnot because even though there might not be the correct way of doing it it is a way of doing it and it's just it might help you in tricky situations if something else doesn't work. So I created one vertex for each one. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hover just slightly above that vertex and then create another one. Yeah. And then same, I'll go slow, slightly below. And again. And then come to my vertex tool and you can see two here and two here. So I'll grab the inner ones. Hit W. Bring those in to there. And then all I can do now, select this one. And then what this is important to know, if you hold V on the keyboard, it turns into a little circle. What that does is you can click and it can snap. So I've snapped that to this vertex. And then the same again, click that, hold V, snap to that vertex. So then we've got that little indent there. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I'll do the same for this one. So I'll grab a vertex there, another one slightly above, a vertex there and another one slightly below grab the inside oops the vertex sorry oh hang on that didn't work did it the top ones didn't do it, the bottom ones are fine sorry let's do that again then oops there we go now they're done it's a contrast selection tool so grab the inners bring that in to match the reference Ah, I was looking at the wrong one. Um, if you do this and you get a mistake, and I've got an extra vertex, what I can do is you can get the target weld tool, which is also in mesh tools, target weld. And what you can do is you can click on one vertex, click and drag, and it merges it to the other. And that might be quite useful. Now, hang on a minute, what am I doing? I'll keep this the same, but what I'll do is. Oops. I'll merge those down to this one. I, I did I don't know, I, I missed that then. So bring these up again, so bring that one to about there, and then click this one, hold V, and then snap it. 
and then the same with this one so even if it's not the correct way and there's an easier way um, this is how I like to work and it's it's alright it's, it's not too bad um, at least then I sort of get a range of various methods that I can model you know and then again the bottom one now this one is going to be a bit easier so do four again these middle ones can come just up to here and then that one can come to the end and all you're doing is just matching it up against the picture then that way you know for a fact that you're going to get a nice solid result so if I hide this image plane now we have a basic shape for our SD card so we've got 15 tries but that's just a 2D plane we haven't connected or we haven't cleaned up yet so we're gonna we're gonna make that do that process now because that's quite important so um, turn off x-ray so I can see now and we need to work in quads or triangles so we can go back to our multi cut tool and now we need to start cutting up our model so let's have a look see the best way to do it I'm gonna click this corner and then bring it to that and then hit enter so now we've got a four-sided shape so one two three Ooh, that's quite. Um, ooh, might have to go triangulate on this one. What I'll do is I'll click that one to this one as well, and this is now an engon because it's five-sided shape. One, two, three. Wait, yeah, because that, there's that little bit there. So um, that's that's cool. Just grab one of these and pop that in there. It doesn't matter if some of them are quads, some of them are triangles, because when you go into the game engine, they all tri triangulate anyway. It's just trying to optimize your scene as best as possible. Well, we're going to just do this roughly now. So we'll grab this one and we'll pop it there. So then that's a quad. And let's have a look. So one, two. I've got to think about these ones now. So grab this corner, pop it up there. Grab this corner and pop it in there. So now we have to just worry about this bit. We could probably just get away with doing triangles to the to the corners again. Now I always try to sort of match up to the corner. Some people might want to match up to a spare edge here, but that will just create more polygons. So best to keep with the vertexes you've already got instead of creating new ones. So as you can see there, nice and flat, but it's go to our mesh cleaner, select matching polygons, faces with more than four sides, apply, and I can see I've got a problem. So, what have I done? One, two, three, four. Why is that a problem? Come into our vertex tool, and we can see it right here. That's not matched, so I can come to our target weld. Click that and drag that onto that. And then the same with this. That one's a spare one. So, even to be honest, um, I rarely run into those problems, but as soon as I do a tutorial, I, I make all of them. So now we've fixed up that little vertex issue. Click on that and it's fine so now what we can do is we can select all of it and we can hit extrude and we can lift that up a bit don't matter how high we'll just do that for now and I need to sort of think how thick it is so if I bring my image back you can sort of see it's relatively I'll push back over let's see what kind of size we can get select all the top vertexes um, and then just literally this is rough I haven't got a side reference but that's fine I'd say it looks around about a little bit less than that I'd say about that because then we're gonna have that top layer as well this layer here which we're now gonna do so Actually, let's look at the the model. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, that's cool. What I will do now... Sorry, I've, I've looked at that and I did not look at what... what side that little indent's going to be on. Um, so it'll be this side, isn't it? If I remember correctly. Nope, it'll be this side with the old indent. So, 
it's this side. So that's cool, I was right. Um, and what I can probably do is probably grab a vertex here with the multi cut tool. And if you hit Control and Shift, it creates a straight line, straight down. Uh, I don't know if that's called adjacent. I don't. I don't know. But um, it's that these two vertexes are specifically aligned on that axis. So we'll click Enter, and we'll do the same for the back. Hold Control Shift. Now, as you can see, we've added another vertex. This is now an end gone, but we'll come and fix those up in a bit. So now we can grab. Well, I click the selection tool and go drag, select all those, then hold Shift and then select these, and then click extrude again, hit Y, and then move that up just that little bit extra. There we go. Now we've got that. We can start optimizing. So we don't need these here because it's all straight. There's no extra detail being involved. So we can get our target weld and I'll mish these all up to the top. So then these areas are just quads. And if you look up here to tries 98, as I do this you'll see that figure slightly, decre slightly decreasing. And that is optimization, which is very important for game engines. Otherwise the games won't, games won't run smoothly. Uh, yep, can't do those because that is an enemy mesh. Uh, they, that'll have to stay there because of that. And that's all good. So, I think this bit's an end gone, but I will just click clean up and then check which ones are. So that face is, and this face is. Right yo. So, we'll just optimize that to there. And then the la the other side. Uh, one, two. I'll do that. So now we've got 80 tries, which is very low poly, which is all we need. That is our model now complete. So if I put side by side if I can um, thing with Windows uh, 8, it snaps. There we go. So we've got our basic mesh and it's all optimized. Obviously this is probably way too much detail for a game asset for an SD card anyway, but it looks fine and if I click on it again, mesh, clean up and click apply everything's fine it's all optimized and 80 tries is enough I do not want any more than that so I get a lot of Facebook messages in my videos so yeah any other time I don't get nothing so that's typical isn't it um, so yes yeah, oh hang on what's going on here that is a mismatch I've just noticed that that is irrelevant so target weld making sure the vertex mode is on click those there. So that's now triangulated instead of vertex, uh, quad, sorry. Um, even though that was optimized because it was only a three or four sided shape, you know. Oh, we now got down to 76. Marvellous. It's all nice. And what you might actually be able to do now is, like I said, try and keep it to corners. Click this one, drag it to this corner. Yeah. And then click this one and drag it to this corner. This is still a quad on top. Yeah. But it's just it, it ju adjusts your vertexes, and that's how I optimize it. Hang on a minute, have I done something wrong here? No, no, no. Sorry, that's fine. That's fine. It just looked a bit odd this bit. And if you come out and take off your thing here, and it, you get something like this, it's because the edge is softened. So I click on it. I go up to um, where is, oh mesh display, and then go to harden edge. There we go, and then everything's fine. And I keep shortcuts up there for everything, so that's cool. So, just have a quick check again if there's anything else we can optimize. Nope, that looks. Hang on a minute. I might be able to just get rid of this. This line here. Don't need that because now I've got this all here. That is a quad. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And then that's a quad as well because there's that vertex here. Go for one final test and then I'll that's brilliant. I'll wrap this up. So the next step will be UV mapping and um, texturing. Uh, well, yeah, we'll do the texturing first and then we'll go on to the normal map details because it's easier to create. As of from my last video, if you saw, I created the textures and then from those I was able to create 
the normal maps from the various shapes that I've already created. So yeah, um, please uh, like and share this video, comment, and um, come back for step two for texturing and UV. Peace.